Hello everyone, my name is Pixariffs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Welcome back to the museum. It feels like it's been a little while since we have been here, and I really need to step my game up a little bit, because, my friends, Minecraft 1.17, the caves and cliffs update has been announced. And I know I'm a few days late getting to this compared to some of my colleagues here on YouTube. Some other folks are really going at it, getting excited about the caves and cliffs update. And I am excited as well. One of the things that really caught my attention from the announcements, which I covered live at the time with my good buddy Joel, with whom I do a podcast called The Spawn Chunks, we kind of gave our reactions live. And one of the things we agreed on was that we both love the look of lush caves. And so... I've been thinking about how I can work a little bit of the lush cave idea into what I'm doing here at the museum, specifically because this room here, the one I'm standing in, the one that is going to be a room, hopefully by the end of this episode, could be a display of plants and other stuff that we see growing naturally in the Minecraft world. Things like grass and, you know, even some of the underwater plant life like seagrass and kelp. How exactly was I going to portray that in the context of the museum? my imagination has kind of been lit on fire by lush caves and so i was thinking for this next area of the museum how about we try our best to reproduce a lush cave biome in minecraft 1.16 with the blocks and items that we have i think we can give it a solid go and i think you'll be surprised at just how close we get to some of the screenshots of the lush caves that we've seen at Minecraft Live, but we can take a look around some of these screenshots and study the notes and the kind of the the exclusive stuff that Mojang gave us a preview of in that event, and we can kind of approximate what things would look like in a lush cave while also adding some life to the museum here. Because I don't want every single exhibit to be this kind of sterile look at well, here is everything in like a nice orderly line with lecterns around and it starts to feel a little bit stale if you take the same approach to every single room and just line everything up in a row like this. So what I was thinking was maybe we go with the idea of having the next room be more of a living diorama. And as you go around the room and explore, all of the plants kind of reveal themselves to you. And we could even have multiple levels to this cave, considering that we now have to have it transition from the balcony in the room next door. So what I was thinking was maybe we can lay out a lush cave in here and have a second level leading up to the next area and maybe even a basement sort of area depending on how much room we actually have to look at the diversity of flora that exists here in Minecraft. There's a lot of stuff to cover, more than you might think, so let's get right to it. Now the first thing we are going to do in this case is actually cover over the abandoned mineshaft that I exposed down here a few episodes ago and I feel kind of bad about doing this especially considering we dug all of this stuff out but I think it's going to work better for this cave diorama kind of setup that we have going on here if we end up closing this off and working with the surrounding terrain instead of leaving the entire thing exposed this way so yeah I'm thinking what we'll end up doing is creating a kind of cave system that steps down down here and we can dig into the rock around here to make this feel a little bit more realistic but for now I think we're just going to give this room a bit of a floor and that will mean that we don't end up falling down into the abandoned mine shaft while I'm in the middle of working out the structure of all of this stuff and where everything goes yeah after playing Minecraft for a while, you really start to get a feeling for how some of these caves end up, and some of the branches of caves usually end in this sort of shape where the cave generation has just kind of almost like tunneled like a worm into the rock and just leaves you with this plus shaped kind of section at the end of a cave entrance. Now we will probably hollow out a whole bunch of this area. We could even leave some of the natural ore and andesite and stone variation in here, but I think as long as we have a decent sized cave structure below ground level, we'll be able to do a lot with it. So one of the things that really excites me about the generation of lush caves is how much water you find down there and how much more the water feels like it has a purpose. If you take a look at the screenshots of lush caves there is plant life growing in there and the vines are kind of hanging down and I imagine kind of you know water sources dripping from the ceiling will give this effect that there is life going on here and there's an ecosystem flourishing under the ground. Whereas with Minecraft as we have it right now you tend to see static lakes 
underneath the surface that don't really have a great deal of life around them. They're just a lake of water surrounded by stone, and that's not necessarily how lakes would generate in real life. There would be moss on the walls, and there'd be some more interesting, like, flora and stuff generating in there, especially in a darker environment. You'd start to get some plants that were kind of adapted to growing in low light conditions. So what I'm thinking about doing is using some of the green concrete powder that we've used actually as the floor in the neighboring room, but we can definitely turn it into moss in the walls here. And we can use that to simulate the mossy environment that Mojang has created for these lush cave biomes. And that's actually going to look pretty close, if not identical, to what they're working with. It's somewhere between green concrete powder and leaf textures is what I'm seeing from these screenshots. And so I'm going to do my best to do that. Obviously, though, when we end up with concrete powder touching the water, that's going to mean it will revert into concrete, which is not going to look as good. So what I'm thinking about doing is maybe a couple of clever techniques to conceal the concrete powder, either behind some leaves or we can end up using some other kind of block, maybe in a full grass block here and there to make it look like the concrete powder is under the water when actually it's something else entirely. Luckily for me, I have a couple of resources from digging out this area. I end up with plenty of stone and plenty of grass from all of the flattening of this area that we've been doing recently. I've come away with a lot of both of those resources. And so when we start to shape some of this stuff out, you will actually find that we've got a lot of stone to work with here. But we can start to use the moss on these cores as well and actually mix it in with the stone a little bit just to kind of leave these shapes coming out of here. Now the next step of decorating this area is going to be how we can suspend concrete powder from the ceiling because in these screenshots we've seen from Mojang the moss does grow up the walls and along the ceiling in some areas of these lush caves and it would be kind of nice to not have to suspend it all using leaves or string like I've done here with the leaves. I kind of think that works, but it does make a fairly obvious distinction between these two blocks. And maybe if we kind of have the leaves growing up to one side, that'd be okay. But I also want to use the leaves to simulate some of the hanging vines that we end up seeing in these screenshots because there's nothing really like that that exists in Minecraft right now. Even the regular vines, which do feature in these screenshots, kind of look like this. Now the question is, can I place some concrete powder on top of those? No, nope, unfortunately I cannot. That's a real shame because that was one of my backup strategies for this was maybe having the concrete powder suspended using some vines here. But I think we may end up having to go with string after all. And the thing about using string is that does also prevent the vines from overgrowing in certain areas, which might be a good thing for the long-term lifespan of this cave. All right, let's step back and take a look at this so far. I've got to be honest, I really like this. I think it's actually working out quite well. We can do a little bit around the corner here as well, kind of move from one diorama to another. And in this one, we've managed to fit in vines, bamboo, grass, and we can potentially, if we bone meal the water under here, put in some seagrass as well, maybe just in like a smaller patch like that. We could probably throw some kelp in as well, but it's not exactly the best way of showing kelp growing. And we might expand on kelp in an exhibit about ocean life rather than one right here about plant life in general. But I think this is overall looking pretty nice so far. One of the things I really would like to try and emulate though, and I need to clear out some of the stuff in my inventory for this, is one of the new spore blossoms that they've introduced into cave ceilings. And those are going to look really cool. They're going to transmit particles all over the place. What I wanted to do with this was actually to smelt this pink terracotta in a furnace so we end up with pink glazed terracotta because with that I think we can do something pretty interesting. There we go, we got some pink glazed terracotta and that has a very floral pattern to it already, kind of like a sakura blossom, like a, a kind of flowering cherry petal or something like that. It looks very kind of organic in itself and so what I think we can maybe do with this is get, I brought some with me actually, some trap doors around the outside to simulate these kind of brown leaves around the outside. And I think we'll try hanging one of these from the ceiling in here. Now in the 1.17 Caves and Cliffs update, they are going to be generating their own particles, but I have a feeling that's not going to really be an option here. So instead, what we'll do is just have it kind of opened out like that as though maybe it's like even meant to resemble the plant of whatever vine this is. I like that. And I think that could work pretty well in a cave ceiling once we've dressed it up a little bit more. Another opportunity for waterborne plant life presents itself in the form of lily pads, which 
in our lush cave diorama are going to be here to represent drip leaf plants and I'm wondering if it's possible for me to grow a piece of kelp underneath that because that would look a little bit like the stem of a drip leaf plant if the lily pad looks like the head of it so I brought a little bit of kelp with me I'm not entirely sure if you can plant kelp directly underneath lily pads if that ends up disturbing them but those these are kind of on the surface so yeah no you, you actually kind of can it doesn't quite work out because that's the tip of a kelp plant and it won't really grow any higher but from a distance who's counting right I think that actually works out okay and the lily pad pads themselves are meant to be kind of the pads of the drip leaf plant that you're going to be able to stand on and that will wilt over time. They seem like a really cool addition to the game. They feel like kind of a parkour plant as it were. So a plant specifically designed to give you a timed platform to walk on is actually kind of a neat idea. Fresh ideas just keep popping out at me at this point. I really think we could turn this into something very very cool looking for the museum. Lighting is still going to be a concern because the hanging vines in the lush caves in Minecraft 1.17 are going to have glow berries on them and so we need to simulate that in some way. I was thinking about maybe putting some sea pickles here under the water or maybe a shroom light or two just kind of knock out a block there add a shroom light in close to the shore because from that angle we're not really going to be seeing it much as a visitor and it's just going to allow a nice ambient light to emanate from this area. Of course we want to make sure that nothing is going to spawn down here like creepers and hostile mobs and so we're probably going to put down a layer of slabs here and there as well to encourage that to still allow some darker areas especially if the uh, visitor is meant to kind of be exploring this like a cave but we're going to take a little bit of artistic license with actual cave generation in that sense because of course we know that slabs don't generate naturally as part of the landscape. But I'm going to keep tinkering away with this because I think we have a couple of other really fun ideas we can put into play here. I just need to go back and grab some more supplies to see if we can pull this off. So our little lush cave simulation is going quite nicely so far. I'm liking the way this is coming together. Green wool was the obvious answer staring me in the face that entire time. Not only that, but when we have the mossy carpet floor, it's actually going to allow us to incorporate some green carpet here and there so we can have layers in here. And what I'm actually going to do with that over there is make a an area that is kind of a little bit more mossy floor to kind of show how the floor can kind of blend in with the different layers. What we want to do in here though is something a little different and that is to introduce azalea trees. Now azalea trees are going to be kind of a different sapling to the ones that we are used to. The, the saplings we're used to are kind of like grass in that if you look at them from above they have this kind of flat cross section kind of shape, this kind of plus shape or a, an X shape of material and that's just kind of a sprite on a flat plane but the azalea saplings I keep almost saying acacia the azalea saplings are a little bit different in that they have a kind of more boxy canopy when they are out there in the world so they actually look like little blocks almost in terms of the sapling the way I want to do those is using armor stands and probably some helmets so if we end up putting this in that orientation like that so it's facing away from the player as they're walking around inside this cave. If we drop a concrete powder on top of that, minus the torch, there we go, we end up with an armor stand just kind of poking out like that, and we can put a helmet on top of that dyed green. And that is as close as we're going to get for the azalea saplings, unless we get a little bit technical with it and take it one step further. And I have a feeling this is going to be a little bit ridiculous, but we're going to try it anyway. So the way we can do this is to dig a hole three blocks deep and plant a fence post at the bottom of that. That is what our armor stand is going to be sitting on. And because the hitbox of a fence is one and a half blocks high, the armor stand is going to be sticking slightly out of the ground there. However, we can still push down two grass blocks on top of it using a piston because the fence will allow a block to stand on top of it. And so what we're going to do is push one grass block down like so. We're going to replace another grass block there, push both of these down. We just need a temporary block to go there and push that down one more time. Then we can remove that block. And now what we have is the head of an armor stand sticking out of a hole in the ground. And then we're going to remove this block here. We're going to put one of the helmets on top of this armor stand. And then we're going to place a peony in the hole. And that is that is about as close as we're going to get to having an azalea sapling in the game. It looks a little bit janky. And I think that's probably down to the fact that the plant 
is slightly off center from the armor stand. So if there was a way we could push the armor stand around ever so slightly, maybe using water streams or something like that, it might line up a little bit better. But mm, from a distance, it's, yeah, it still looks a little bit weird, but I think we'll probably leave it for now. I'm actually going to change things up a little bit just because where I wanted to put another lush cave exhibit around the side actually overlaps the boundary of this room. And I don't think I'm going to stitch this cave into one next to it in the next door exhibit. I think what I'm instead going to do is wrap back around to the side over here and we'll do another lush cave a little bit further down, but one that kind of stays within the boundary, the footprint of the room as it exists above. So I'm going to dig out another area here. This is well away from the abandoned mine shaft, so we don't have to worry about too much in the way of you know, overlapping with that and, and opening up the area that we've already just closed off. I'll pop a couple of torches in here and I'm going to set up another lush cave diorama, kind of like this one, but a little bit more expansive based on some of the screenshots we've already seen. So a little bit later around this corner, we have this little lush cave diorama here that was kind of based loosely on a screenshot that I've got from the lush cave in the cave update. And it's looking all right. It's not looking quite as expansive, obviously, because I wanted to stay within the boundary of this room where I could, but I think it's looking pretty nice. And despite the fact that we don't have all of those extra plants and stuff quite yet, it's a reasonable facsimile of what we can expect to find in an underground cave biome in 1.17. And I like the look of this quite a lot. Now we're going to close over the roof of here, of course. I've got to make sure the lighting in here is going to be adequate, but then I think we're going to adopt a kind of similar approach to a cave up here. But instead, of course, this is going to be the main part of the exhibit, the section that you'll walk into as you walk in from either of the rooms adjacent to it and probably even the room over there that I think is going to be based on stone for the most part. So this is actually quite a good transition through this kind of cave diorama into an exhibit about stone. Up here, we're going to have all of the plants and flowers that you can get in the game distributed in a slightly more organized way and not just kind of as an example environment like we've got down here. And I think this is going to be nice and straightforward to do. So I'm just going to head off and do a little bit more terraforming of this room here. And I'll be back with you guys in just a few minutes. Hey folks, welcome back. So it's still in the process of being worked on here and I haven't completely enclosed the cave ceiling but this is what we're working with and you might be kind of confused about my choice to put all of these flowers that are normally found out in the open in a cave setting and there's a couple of reasons for that first of all I knew we were going to put a roof on this thing anyway because I wanted to make sure it had a second floor to it and that that second floor could also connect to other rooms of the museum so it was pretty inevitable that we were going to have to put some sort of roof over this so a natural setting wasn't really going to be all that possible with the sky above it unless we put like three floors of glass in or something like that which didn't really seem like the right thing to do. Also it kind of allows me to highlight the areas of grass and kind of draw the eye towards them, draw a bit more focus towards them and from there to the signs that explain what each of the flowers are. Now, as you come in from the grass exhibit over here, we have Oxide Daisies is the first one you encounter, which might seem a little unusual, but they are fairly common found in plains and so forth. And I, what I've decided to do is talk about what the flower type is, kind of the rarity or like the type of it. Because I talk about these being tall flowers and these being common flowers because like one high flower just doesn't really make a great deal of sense in the context of this. But yeah, where you can find them is obviously the plains biome here. And then light gray dye is what they make when you start to break them down. So I figured I would include that information alongside each of the flowers and other flower related things, which is why I've got berry bushes in here as well. And then grass and ferns don't really break down into anything, but are found in kind of specific places. I mean, grass and tall grass are everywhere, but ferns, you only really find them in taiga and jungle biomes. So I thought that was kind of important to include here on the sign. And all of this might seem like a relatively minimal way to present this information when we're already using lecterns, but I feel like lecterns everywhere is just going to get a little bit repetitive. So between these two rooms, we've already got a lot of lecterns already, and I like the idea of breaking things up a little bit and allowing the viewer time to just kind of process a small amount of information at a time. So right here we got Azure Bluets, so we got the Poppy up there as well, Dandelions. I decided to put all four colors of tulips in the same exhibit because they all look basically the same and do basically the same thing. It will take the colors of dye they produce. Cornflowers over here 
in the corner. I need to do something about the storage here, but I still have so many blocks in here that I need to redistribute into the museum's main storage system. All of the tall flowers are around this kind of central section here, and I decided that I'd try and do a kind of rockery vibe with this as well, which is why the cobblestone slabs are in here, just to kind of break up these patches of grass and dirt here and there. So yeah, we have the rose bush there, the peony, the sunflower, the lilac. Over in this corner, we have the two flower forest unique flowers, which are the allium and the lily of the valley. Over on the opposite side here, we have the swamp unique flower, that blue orchid, the tiger bush here for sweet berries, and I would love to preserve these in the different states they exist, but I guess if people wanted to take a look at the different states of growth of a sweet berry bush, you can always just pick a berry and then plant one for yourself if you would like to, and the berries are naturally going to grow back on any that are picked, so that makes a fair amount of sense to me. And over here in this corner, we have all of the different types of saplings and I've started to build a roof over the top of these simply so they won't end up growing <laughs> and the problem with all of the saplings of course is that some of them especially the acacia sapling can grow at really odd heights and different angles and stuff so I had to make sure that this area over here was kind of covered over to prevent that from happening and I'm still honestly a little bit scared that the acacia sapling is going to try it the dark oak we don't even have to worry about but with each of these as well instead of them producing a specific type of dye or anything like that or the edible berries in the case of the berry bush what I thought I would do is include the dimensions of any sapling formations that you can grow them in right so the jungle sapling of course has a one by one and a two by two likewise the spruce sapling the dark oak sapling has to be a two by two everything else is one by one see it kind of makes a little bit of sense that way and over here we have a walkway straight through to the next room of the museum which is going to be all about stone so naturally this area is going to stay like a kind of stony archway and the floor here is going to be kind of stony, but I'm not certain what I'm going to do in the next room. I think we might even go back to having a wooden floor just so once again we can kind of highlight each of the individual stone types, stone blocks and all of the variants that they can produce so that we can highlight what the individual blocks are more easily. It kind of helps to have a contrasting material or a material with a little bit more color because I feel like this room is mostly gray with pockets of color and this next room is going to be like largely a different color but then with pockets of gray. So you're always trying to contrast one thing against the other and it helps things stand out a lot more. I really like the way this room has come together so far. I think it's turned out pretty well. And like I said, I do still need to connect up the cave part of this so that we're going to enclose all of this. And then from there, I have to work on lighting and how to control the ambience in here. I've already got a couple of places where I can conceal torches or other lighting blocks. I might actually switch that out for a lantern, something that's not going to produce particles, something that's going to provide a little bit higher light level. But realistically, we can probably duck a couple of them in underneath these leaves and maybe put some under gray carpet if we really need to with the stone floor here and of course down below here we have the lush cave biome simulation is what i'm trying to call these and i think that's actually turned out pretty well just having a sign there in the entrance and then from here you get to see all of the stuff that we've added in for the lush cave i added a couple of those flowers in the ceiling as well the kind of spore blossom simulation flowers and i think this actually turned out really nice for what we can do in 1.16 it is not a bad approximation of the screenshots we've seen, and I'm really hoping that we'll get to do something similar with a dripstone cave somewhere else in the museum, because those are also looking kind of awesome, and I can't wait to try some of that stuff out. I'm probably going to close the rest of this off off camera between episodes and maybe figure out what's going on the next floor. It might end up being some more plant related stuff. We might see what else we can grab from out there. You might notice also that the one thing that is missing from our collection of flowers here is the wither rose and we've got very familiar with the wither rose lately what with making that wither skeleton farm recently and I still have plenty of them left but it didn't really feel right to have such a dangerous thing just out here in the open where players could, in theory, walk up into it, right? So I think we're going to save the Wither Rose for either the exhibition about the Wither or an exhibition about the Nether. And we're going to have it, like, glass, you know, cordoned off kind of thing so that players can't accidentally damage themselves. Because ideally, when you go to a museum, you don't want to hurt yourself on something. And having a flower that can poison you if you walk into it just didn't really give the right vibe for this exhibit. I might even end up putting some sort of barrier in front of the sweet berry bushes to give people the idea that these can potentially deal damage to you as well, right? So we've got to think about those aspects, but I really like 
how this exhibit came together and hopefully you folks do as well because that's where we're going to leave it for this episode of the minecraft survival guide don't forget to leave a like on it for me if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more my name has been pixarifs i'll see you guys soon bye for now